feed to receive for the arrows, number 20, Kyle Sanning. At 26, Garth Gilbert. Kicking off for the Chieftains, 49, Connor Dunn. This team underway as Dunn puts his left foot into it, down towards the near hash. Tecumseh taking their time to pick it up around the nine-yard line. Clay Carr given pursuit, and great pursuit by Carr. He makes the tackle at the 16-yard line, only a return of about seven yards, and what a job that time by Tecumseh to get downfield. Yeah, that was really good coverage by the Chiefs there, Clay Carr, and uh, finishing him off there was uh, another Chief with a big hard hit. Now really put the arrows in a tough spot there on 16 here for the first possession of the game. Of course when Belfast gets the ball we'll be seeing if the Chiefs can keep that streak going that they're scoring on their first possession of the game in every game this year. Flat out amazing. And jet sweep comes around the left side for the arrows on their first play from scrimmage. Ronnie Stein helped her starting a linebacker tonight for the injured Nate Dodds. Makes the tackle, gain of about two and a half, second at seven, coming up for the arrows. The jet sweep they like. How do you stop the jet sweep, Kevin? Well, um, got to get good pursuit there and uh, and make sure that your, your backside end stays home. And certainly Bell Fountain played it great there. Held Garth Gilbert to a gain of just one yard. Good play by Mitch Wren and uh, the rest of that Bell Fountain defense. Back judge maybe wants to talk to the official. Second at seven. We're just underway on 13-9 to the belt. 11-18 to go in the opening quarter. No score. And uh, anytime you can kick and make the other team start inside their own 20, I think that's, uh, that's a great job by your kicking unit. That's right. Great coverage by the Chiefs. And looking down there on the defense, they look to be a little healthier. Got Nick May back on number one, back in his regular cornerback spot on the defense for the Chiefs. I do not see Nate Dodds out there. Still missing Nate. The Going, going to long snap. He, he will long snap, but that's about it. Is there any uh, prognosis for him getting back in the Maybe week 11. Weeks? Maybe week 11. It's a big loss for the Chiefs. He's really having a great season, but they'll plug in and move on. Man goes in motion. Here comes a little counter play. And to come, is able to break containment. May trying to make the tackle. He'll bring down the ball carrier, but not before there's about a 13-yard jump by Gilbert. And to come to likes to run that little counter play. They ran it very cleanly that time, and they got all, the entire bell-bound defense to blow left, and there was a big seam to Tecumseh's left side. It sure was. Uh, they faked the jet sweep that time, the same play they ran on the first play, and Gilbert just sort of delayed in the backfield, came back against the grain, and good thing Nick May stayed home, was able to bring him down after that big game because he was the only chief on that side of the field. And Tecumseh wants to pass. Look at around the flat. Chiefs have good containment. Tackle made immediately about a three-yard gain. Starting at corner tonight, I think basically just because of the matchup of how good the key is, is Sean Eggman. Yeah, he's been there uh, on defense for the Chiefs and uh, been tried to help contain what looks to be like a very potent that comes to offense. Yeah, they can mix and match. They do, you know, a little bit of everything. Yeah, there's the young quarterback there, sophomore Riley Galt, zipping that one out to the side. Second nice seven. throw by him, and it's a four-yard pickup. Called a six-foot sophomore. Second and six from the Tecumseh 32. Here comes the sweep again around the right side and a little bit of a running lane towards the marker. Looks like it'll be maybe a yard and a half short. Tackle made by Mitch Wren, third and two and a half, maybe. Yeah, it looks like they shoved him out of bounds there. A couple yards short of the first down. Be a big third down for the arrow. And Keith Morgan playing at safety right now. So Belbound using some of their... Uh, well, they're top performers early on defensively. Yeah, they've got all their athletes out there. Um, probably shows Coach Brown's respect for this new Carlisle attack. Galt sets his offense, has a wing to the left, puts a man in motion. And a straight give right up the gut and a first down and a gain of about seven right over left guard. Tackle made by Connor Hill. First down run that time by Bet Smelka, who's one of Tecumseh's top players. Gain of about eight and Tecumseh right now early in this game. Still no score, but they're winning the point of attack. Yeah, they really are moving the ball well. Got Bell Fountain defense flowing to the outside there with several early feet to the outside. Opened up the inside for Smelko. Took it right up the middle there for a nice gain in the first down. Arrows are on the move. First of ten. Here comes the counterplay. Chiefs have good contain, but the running back is shifty and he got about six yards. What a run by Aaron Loka, one of the seniors. He really Showed some fancy footwork and takes it into Belfound territory to the 48. I just I thought when he first got the ball on the delay, maybe no gain, and he got seven. Yeah, it looked like he'd be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he was able to uh, put a little move in the hole there and then get up the field. Again, Nick May on the tackle for the Chiefs. 
That's about the second or third tackle by by Nick here in the early going, and that's too many tackles for the, from the secondary for the Chiefs. They need to tighten it up in there. Second to three. Here comes the pass. Galt has pressure. Still has pressure, slips out of one tackle. Now he will look to be a runner, and he takes it for a first down to the Bell Fountain 41. He showed me something right there. He was under some heavy duress in the backfield and slipped away some, from some pretty good Bell Fountain speed and took it forward to the 41-yard line. Yeah, Mark Duffy had him squarely between his, uh, in his field of vision, and, and usually Duffy will finish a play like that. And, and he would have been able to tackle Galt. It would have been a big loss. But Galt was able to shake free of his arm tackle and get down the field, and, and still another tackle by Nick May, and the Arrows continue their march. And some of the main guys just came out on defense. Duffy, Egler, Badenhoff, they're all out. Here comes an inside give by Loka again. He got about four and a half. He's a very shifty runner. Kind of unusual to see on a series some of your top defensive players all come out like that. Yeah, I think Coach Brown's trying to send a message to his troops that they need to get focused uh, right now because this is not uh, the way the Chiefs are accustomed to uh, starting off the game as the arrows continue to smartly move the ball. Lokai, again, looked like he wasn't going to make much of a game, but he ended up with a nice five-yard gain. 7.20 to go in the opening quarter. Lokai in motion to Lokai trying to get around the right end. Trying to reverse his field, and he got about three. Third at about two at the Bell Fountain, 33. Egler comes back in. Looks like there's a flag on the field, Kevin, but it's a monster-sized leap, I think. It's been out there for a couple plays. <laughs> yeah, it's not a flag. It's either that or uh, maybe a towel. Maybe someone dropped a towel, but front sign helper on the tackle there. Nice play by the Chiefs linebacker stopping. Low kind short of the first down. Brings up a third and a short two. Third and two. Galt gets his offense set. They have power to the left. Send a man in motion that way. Straight give. First down run. And moving the pile is Smelko. Smelko is a powerful runner. He got about six to the bound 26. Strong run by the senior vet, Smelko. What if it comes to top performers? And to come to right now, it just looks machine-like. You have to remember, they started this drive at their 15-yard line. That's right, and they have very methodically moved the ball down the field, consuming the first quarter clock already down under 6.30 to play here in the first quarter, almost the whole half of the first quarter being uh, taken up by the Darrow's march as the referee takes an equipment timeout and the Arrows rehuddle. Referee winds the clock. Center for Duke Carlisle comes to the line and is followed by the rest of his teammates. But another tackle there by a secondary member of Bell Fountain, Matt Brisson. Seems like all the tackles are being made in the, in the chief secondary, so they're going to get a better push up front. That's true. Here comes Lokai again around the right side on a first down run. He got maybe two, second and eight. This team, you know, the wing T offense to me, and we've seen it from uh, Wapakoneta this year, Sydney. I think the game's pretty much one on first down when you're the defensive team. If you can hold them to second and eight or worse, uh, it really jams up what they're trying to do. Yeah, it makes it a lot tougher. Uh, and the Chiefs are in good shape here with the second and eight, but. Uh, you know, there's a lot of faking in the wing tee. The wing tee is very much a deceptive offense and it has some power, but really the faking is key, and this young sophomore quarterback really seems to have fake now. Here comes the toss play. And the running back tries to dive through a, a three defenders on a late flag. Run by the side, Judge. Gilbert's a ball carrier. you got maybe two to the 22, but a late flag from the side, Judge. And it's a very late flag, and the Arrows players are clapping their hands. And it looks like it's going to be on the Chiefs. It's going to be a personal foul. Face mask on the Chiefs. That's going to be a big penalty against Bell Fountain. Half the distance to the goal. Move it down inside the Bell Fountain 10-yard line. And now the threat from the come to Arrows is very real. Make it the 11-yard line. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is a big one because it was going to be third and maybe six. That's right. Chiefs let him off the hook there with that penalty, and that gives the arrows the first down. Galt comes up to the line of scrimmage, puts Loka in motion. Straight give to Smokel, bursting through the middle of the defense to about the five. He's just a bulldozer. He is. He's a hard runner. He gets his pads down low. Not a lot of area to hit for the Chiefs and defenders to get um, a helmet on him or their shoulder pads into him, and he's able to pick up good yardage there. Seven yards, almost eight yards, and the 
Arrows now are knocking at the door. Second and four from the Belt Fountain. Five, no score in the first quarter. 440 to go, but the Cubs is threatening, and they're playing ball control football. They got the ball to start the game, and they've not given it up yet. Smelko, the running back behind Galt. And straight give to Smelko. He dives in. Touchdown. And a nice little move right around right guard. Bounced it outside. Takes it in from five yards out. It's the Cubs that takes the opening possession. 85 yards. Mainly on the ground. And they score it. 432 to go in the opening quarter. It's 6 nothing arrows. Here comes the conversion. Yeah, Smelko did a real nice job there. It looked like it was going to be a smash-off tackle, but it was kind of bottled up in there. So he took it around the end, but... Instead of running wide, then he slanted back over the uh, hash mark and was able to dive into the end zone. Carson Williams puts up the conversion. He puts it through. What a drive by the arrows. On the McDonald's, the Belfound High School football scoreboard. The Cubs are quiet this play. The Cubs to seven, Belfound. Nothing. Chiefs will get their opening touch after this break on 1390 the Bell. Zach Mossbarger back deep for the Chieftains. 75, Carson Williams to kick off for the Arrows. Back at Dodd Stadium, kickoff brought to you by Vicarious. North Main, great for pizza, salad, subs, Vicarious Pizza, North Main, Bell Pound, 599-4511. Carson Williams, little squibber, almost like an onside kick. Chiefs take it at the 35 and just kind of squirm their way up to about the 40. That was definitely on purpose by Carson Williams. Yeah, it was, and it uh, tackled Derek Schmidt there, who made a nice job of fielding the ball, getting his hands on the ball, and taking it straight up the field. So, good field position for the Chiefs with their own 41. It worked out okay for them, and here comes Bell Fountain. Oh, boy, their defensive, their defensive players for the Chiefs right here on the, in front of us on the bench. Coach Brown is just uh, about to self-combust. Trying to get their attention, I think, a little bit. <laughs> Remind them that the game has started, that the uh, warm-ups are over, and that it's time to get playing. He is uh, upset. You can understand that, that the Arrows really just dominated the line of scrimmage on that first drive. They had their way with the Chiefs, moved them off the ball, and there was nothing fancy, probably nothing that the Chiefs did not see on the film this week. And just fine execution by Tecumseh, and they were able to take it down the field, mistake-free football. One uh, big mistake helped them from the Chiefs, the personal foul penalty, and now we'll see if Bell Fountain can keep their uh, scoring streak on first possessions alive. And Chiefs will spread it out. Give to Egler. Egler looking to get a nice block. Tries to go wide. Maybe got one. Pretty good job on the corner that time by the Tecumseh defense. Tecumseh likes to play a 4-4, but they'll walk up their outside backers and almost look like a 6-2, Coach Brown says. I think that's probably why Bell Fountain's going shotgun four wide. They kind of want to flatten out, spread out that defense. That's right. And, um, Cornerback Garth Gilbert there helped out on that play. Take down Egler. Uh, very short game. Not even a one-yard game. And now Egler the running back behind Morgan, who's in shotgun. And Moss Parker goes around the left side. He got about two. He ran in motion from right to left. Got the ball right after the snap from Morgan. And Kind of looked like when it's the Cubs was played on the jet sweep. A little different formation, and he only got about two-third and about seven, and suddenly with Bell Fountain down seven to nothing, you need to answer right here. Bell Fountain came out in a double slot formation there. Mossberger in the slot uh, with Egler in the tailback behind Morgan, and they brought him in motion, and like you said, Morgan took the snap and handed off immediately to Mossberger, who tried that left side to get wide, but again, a good play by the arrows and held him to a short game. Brings up a third and eight. Third and a short eight for the Chiefs. Low snap. Morgan picks it up. Has some pressure. Needs to do something with the ball. Still looking to break the team. Throws downfield into coverage, and the ball's picked off by McKee. McKee taken down pretty much immediately, but at the 42, and Morgan that time had a lot of pressure on the low snap. Threw all the way back from about his own 25, and the line of scrimmage was the 44, and 
Ball was just in the air too line of Mc, long and McKee just took it up a player. He read where the football was. Yeah, McKee was just laying out there in center field just watching the whole thing and Morgan threw late and into a crowd. Never saw McKee and McKee he got just a, a great break on the ball, was able to see it all the way through. It was an easy interception for the fine arrows free safety and now the Chiefs defense is going to have to bow its back and keep Bell Fountain in the game here. Yep. And Cups is trying to run wide. Flag thrown. I think maybe an illegal substitution by the Chiefs because it looks to me like Sean Igler ran out onto that play late defensively. A gain of only two on the play. Second and about eight. 250 to go in the opening quarter. Tecumseh leads seven to nothing. Referees are talking about it down there and pointing uh where is the de defense? And you've got it right, Bill. It's going to be an illegal substitution on the Chiefs. Yeah, well, it's kind of obvious right in front of us. And he just ran, ran out uh, like it was uh, an open gym situation, and that's a no-no. Usually, uh, you got a little more leeway with that on the defense, though, than the offense. And not that time. <laughs> not that time, I guess. Maybe it was too, even too many men on the field there with... Uh, See how costly this will be. Yeah, 15-yard penalty on the Chiefs. I really don't like that rule. Seems a little harsh. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. But I guess it's fair. The heroes do it the same. It's the <laughs> same deal. That's right. 15-yarder penalty the game brought to by the little rule. Yes, Certainly sir. not a uh, violent penalty or a penalty in which anyone's threatened with uh, injury. So, yeah, nevertheless. Cool. Lost to one. Penalty of the game brought to you by the Logan County Sheriff's Office. Make sure you do not drink and drive. That reminder from the Sheriff's Office. Here comes an inside give to the Bulldozer. Smelko, who does a good job to hold on to the ball. He's twisting and turning, and he does not like to go down easily. I thought he got about three yards after contact just on his own. 2.20 to go in the opening quarter, and the arrow's driving second and four at the Bell Fountain 22. And they're the team that's, you know, taking the fight to the Chiefs right now. They sure are. The, the arrows have definitely come out here fired up. The Chiefs seem a little bit flat. And uh, the, the arrows have executed. They stopped the Chiefs on their first drive of the year. We haven't seen that before, really, with a, a three and out, followed by a turnover on the pass interception. And right now, Tecumseh is playing the way they want to play. Man in motion. Here comes maybe the counter play. And just refuses to go down. It takes to about the 16. I think it's going to be a first down run that time by Tecumseh's Kyle Sanning. He's slippery. Penalty flag on the far side of the field, all the way over, thrown by the, the side judge. I, I got to think that'll be an offense. Or uh, some penalty on offense. Tecumseh at this point. And it's going to be an illegal procedure on the arrow, so that's going to nullify that run. Back them up five yards. It's going to help the Chiefs some right there. And the Bofountain uh, team kind of tell up here in the press box, but they don't seem to have the same giddy-up early, and I think the coaches know that, <laughs> and they've been on them from the get-go tonight. Yeah, I think so, but I think that they're going to wake up here pretty quick, because this the Compton team has definitely come to play, Yes. and they are uh, very, notwithstanding that penalty there, that's really their first mistake of the evening. Executed and, and performed extremely well here tonight. They're going to send Josh McKee, their fine athlete out there to the wide right and line up in the wing tee with Smelko as the single setback behind R Riley Galt. And give to the ball carrier trying to run wide on the sweep. That ball carrier was number nine, Dustin Holmes. Sophomore. Real nice play by defensive end Mark Duffy over there, forcing him to cut inside into the pursuit and then actually making the tackle too, cutting up and taking him down. That puts... Um, the Chiefs defense in a pretty good spot. They've got the arrows now facing the third and nine. And uh, it's going to be a tough spot for the arrows. Big play here. No doubt. A penalty made it the second and ten, which really helped Belfound. Now it's a third and eight at the Belfound 25. Galt and shotgun. And now we have a stoppage, maybe a timeout. Timeout arrows. We'll take a timeout. 47 seconds to go in the opening quarter on the McDonald's to Belfound High School football scoreboard. It comes to seven, Belfound nothing. Arrows, though, driving again. More after this on 1390 The Bell.
Dodge Stadium. Arrows use their first time out of the first half. They have two left. Chiefs have all three remaining, but Belfound needs to bow its back, as Kevin says. It comes to driving. 7 nothing. Arrows leading. Third and eight at the Bell Fountain. 25 at comes to trying to get more. Golf puts his man in motion. Golf wants the pass. Rolling right throws. And was it caught? No, out of bounds on the far sideline. Well, he really tried to thread the needle around the Bell Fountain. 16. That was good defense there by linebacker Ron Steinhelfer, who was covering the fullback, Bet Smelko. Be able to get a hand and distract in front of Smelko's face and distract him enough. Ball slipped through there and actually hit Smelko right between the four and the zero on his jersey. Bounced off his shoulder, his shoulder pads off his chest, harmlessly out of bounds. This is going to be four down territory for the Arrows. And Gaud will line up in the shotgun trying to convert this fourth and eight. Yep, the Bell Fountain 25. Galt looking, throws into the end zone. Coverage is there and dropped by the Arrows in the end zone. Tried to hit Gilbert. He actually had some separation on Nick May. Nick really never turned around and it falls incomplete. Well, found Dodge one right there. They sure did and uh, it was a bad play by Nick May. Sometimes uh, just being there is good enough because Nick really didn't get um, himself oriented to the ball real well but he stayed between the receiver and the ball. Made Gilbert dive for it. It would have been a really a, a tremendous catch. Gilbert could have hauled it in but he couldn't hang on to it. Falls harmlessly to the ground and the Chiefs now will come out on offense and see if they can't get this attack that put so many points on the board this year. Moving. Big, big stop. I was a big stop, and clearly the Chiefs penalty helped a lot, but the Chiefs played much better defense on that yes. series. And on their last offensive series for the Chiefs, they were stopped first time all year. That's right. Uh -huh. And we have a penalty at the beginning of the play. I think of the Chiefs, right? I think so. It's going to be a... Uh, Illegal false procedure, start. false start on the Bell Fountain offense, and they'll start off with the first and 15 here. Chiefs continue to have a little little hard time waking up here this evening at Dodge Stadium. So. <laughs> is there anything you could do as a coach, or that's just the nature of the game? I think Jason Brown is uh, trying addr addressing the issue. Okay. So uh, I don't think that anybody will sleep through what he's saying down there, that's for sure. Well, <laughs> five-yard penalty brought to you by the Sheriff's Office, first and 15 at the Bell Fountain's 20. Comes Egler trying to get a block. He gets a nice block. Nice move into the secondary, and Egler dives forward. Just got tripped up to about the 36. First down run, and if he doesn't get tangled right there with the defender's hands, he may have been gone. Yeah, that was McKee. Got him just around the ankle. It was an ankle tackle by Josh McKee. Got him tripped up, and uh, he still fell forward for another five or six yards. Picks up the first down at the Bell Fountain 36, but he was off heading for the end zone if McKee hadn't got that shoestring tackle there. But by far and away, the... Uh, best offensive play for the Chiefs here in the early going and see if we can't get if the Chiefs can't get uh, Keith Morgan in, in on the act as well. Morgan is shotgun Angler right behind him. Delay give to Angler looks to reverse field and swung down nice tackle loss of a couple of yards that'll be the last play of the quarter. Good tackle that time in the backfield by Tecumseh. Justin Stewart with the tackle. We'll take a break after one. Here comes the lead. Bell found 7 0 in the McDonald's Bell Found High School football scoreboard. Or after this, on 13 9 to the Bell. At this time, we'd like to introduce the 2007 football cheerleaders for Bell Found. They are Brittany Hamilton, Anna Baker, Aaron McLeod, Bethany Kingray, Lindsay Heath. Tony Turner, and Caitlin Tassel. These young ladies are coached by Andrea Simon and Mary Beth Ellis. Great job, ladies. Keep it up. And speaking of the cheerleaders, they are raffling off a Jeep and Longaberger basket. Back at Bell Fountain High School, we get ready for the second quarter to begin on 13-9 to the Bell. It the lead, Bell Fountain 7-0. Chiefs trying to pick up their eighth one of the year, but it won't be easy from the looks of it. On WPKO-FM right now, Indian Lake leading at Benjamin Logan, 14-0. Yep. Tomorrow, don't forget the Bucks and the Spartans on 13-9 to the Bell. Do you smell upset there, Kevin? Oh, I don't know. I think uh, Jim Trestle will have the Buckeyes ready to go. We 
watching some Ohio players there for the Spartans. Javon Ringer, their fine running back from Dayton Chaminade, Julian, and Brian Hoare is a Cleveland St. Ignatius, their quarterback, and the alma mater, Moeller's contributing the middle linebacker to the Spartans, Greg Jones. There comes Morgan, uh, a little bit of a quarterback keeper on that shotgun spread. He got about eight to the 41-yard line. 11.50 to go in the opening half around 13.90 the bell. 7 nothing. Tecumseh leads it. Last run went for about 8 yards, 3rd and 5 for the Chiefs at their own 41-yard line. And it's good to see Morgan there getting involved in the offense. A good solid 6, almost 7-yard pickup for Keith. His first carry, I believe, of the game. Uh, and the Chiefs seem to have the spread option attack here. Starting to click a little bit here as the second quarter opens. 3rd down, though. I'll have to convert here. I don't think it's four down territory at this point. Third and five at the bell-bound 41. Morgan maybe wants to run option. Going to pitch it to Egler. Egler looking to get a block. Egler trying to move the pile. He takes it towards the first down marker. And Gilbert on the tackle. Pretty good option that play. I thought Morgan ran it pretty effectively. And the official says first down. I thought it was going to be real close. It was very close. He got a good spot there. He got a... A left foot spot as opposed to a right foot spot, as John Madden would say. Got the, the upfield foot, or the downfield foot from the uh, side judge there. And just over the Chiefs 46-yard line, enough for the first down by about the length of the football. And Bell Fountain will come to the line first and ten. Morgan in shotgun. To Cubson, their 4-4 defense. Mossberger goes in motion. And they're going to give it to Mossberger, trying to run wide, cuts it back up inside, and he refuses to go down. What a run by Mossberger, got nine and a half. Looked like one of the, the Cups of backs in the opening series. He just kept moving the pile, bouncing off people, and what looked like was going to be a four-yard run, a nine-yard run. That's right. When he decided to go north there, there was no hesitation. And Zach Mossberger cut it up and ran through a couple tackles and then really finished that run strong, taking about three arrows with him and almost picking up... Uh, a uh, first down there will make it the second and very short. Nice down to play with here for Jason Brown. Uh, he's got uh, third down here if they need it for first down. So we'll see what they have in their uh, playbook right I now. I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe go deep left side here to uh, Rollins. So. Nope, we're going to run the option. Morgan will keep it. Morgan gets the first down. Got about three. Tackle made that time by Tecumseh's Justin Sneary. Defensive end, junior. To come to not as big as some of the teams I've seen over the years, but they are pretty quick. Yeah, they are quick. They swarm to the ball, and they're hard hitters, good tacklers. And Vet Smelko, the fullback's in there in the center of the defense, too, a middle linebacker in on a lot of plays. He's a fine player. Chiefs there sent Moss Barger in motion, left uh, Jeff Rollins out here in single coverage. You may see him come back to that later. Now winner split wide left. Three receivers to the right. And Egler goes in motion to the right. Empty backfield. Yes. Morgan wants to pass, throws over on the side, looking to get it to his receiver on a little flanker screen. Got about four to the Tecumseh 37. T.J. Garman over there makes the catch. And then a nice run after the catch. She flooded that right side, the wide side of the field, away from the press box here at Dodge Stadium. And then just threw a quick pop out there to T.J. Garman, who had Sean Egler and leave Jacob Moran out there blocking for him was able to pick up uh, three yards. And the cups have flowed well. When he first got it, I thought he would get at least seven or eight yards, but they closed it up. Yeah, they did. And one of the things that the Chiefs have really missed since Trace Robb got hurt was that big tight end over the middle. We haven't really seen much of that the last couple weeks. Morgan keeps it himself. Morgan's got a little bit of a seam, and then he runs into Beth Smelko, and that's the end of the run. Yeah. Third at about three, coming up from the Tecumseh 34-yard line. They need to get inside the 31. Seven nothing. The arrows lead it. 8:35 to go in the opening half. Here on 1390 WBLL Bell Fountain with Kevin Bragg. I'm Bill Tipple, and another big third down. At this point, though, Kevin, it may be four down territory if you get a couple of yards. Oh, I think so. It's uh, inside the arrows 35-yard line. The Chiefs are moving the ball. Smartly, I think Coach Brown will be looking at this as a two-play sequence right here, not a one-play sequence to get the first down. Third and four at the 34. Give to Egler. Look at a run wide. It's nice blocking at the point of attack, and they're trying to strip the ball, but he refuses to give it away. And I don't know if he got the first down. He stopped right around the 31. I would guess he's short by maybe a foot, foot and a half, if I had to guess. And the referee's taking a long look at it. He's going to wave his hands and bring in the chains for a measurement. It's that close. Both signs will take and a referee's timeout while we... And if it is fourth and a foot, you you know, you go for it, right? Oh, yeah, they'll go for it here. Okay. 
Coming up at the post-game show, we'll have our Patrizzi's Pizza Player of the Game, also the all-around awards band member, or uh, all-around awards student athlete of the week, Jacob's Auto Repair Band Member of the Week. They move the sticks out here. It's interesting as they move it, and they are going to be a little short by a foot, but um, one of the things that's been a controversial, it's not so much a controversial, but an interesting subject around the NFL in the last year or so, is there was a study done by a California Berkeley professor who statistically analyzed going for it on fourth down in the NFL and concluded the team should would be a lot better off if they went for it on fourth down more than they do, that they're actually overly conservative and that they hurt themselves by not doing that. But really it's just uh, one thing or the other. You do make it or you don't. Here go the Chiefs. Yeah, fourth at about a foot. They go double tight. Wishbone backfield. Morgan keeps it himself, and Morgan got a push from his line and his running back. And he got the first down, I would say, by Mick. Maybe a yard. Yeah, certainly where the side judge is marking it here, right on the 30-yard line. He'll make it by a, a good half a yard at least inside the air, about the length of the football inside the arrow's 30-yard line, and the Chiefs will continue to methodically move the ball down the field. The arrows dominated that first quarter with their long drive, and the Chiefs are returning the favor here in the second quarter. We're down to 7:20 to go in the second quarter. The Chiefs continue to move towards that tying score. Yeah, they're kind of hogging the ball right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's been a game of well, here comes Ziegler trying to run wide. Looks to make a little shimmy shake, but the Cubs are just too many defenders over on the right side. They make a tackle for a loss of about one. Yeah, outside linebacker Ryan Bartlett, who's only five foot eight, 155 pounds, but he played a very strong corner there on that play. Actually, dropped Egler for a short loss, pushing the ball back to about the 31 yard line, so a loss of almost two for the Chiefs. And bring up a second in a 12 situation. The Chiefs have earned all their yards tonight against the Arrows, that's for sure. They are good swarming defense and, and really make some good hits when they get to the ball. Keep their safety back deep, too. I think they're trying to, you know, make you earn it. I give up a big one. Here comes Mossberger trying to run wide. He breaks through some passes, makes the cut down the side by the 15, 10. Finally knocked out around the two. Oh, 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 what a run by Mossberger. He ran on the wide side of the formation. Running towards us, looks like he's going to get a couple, and then he just cut breaks through tackles and made a great cut at the 15 and dived towards the pylon and got in. I thought he maybe went out at the two, but no, says the umpire. I, I, I think as he dove to the end zone, he, he, he restretched the ball out, and he actually put the ball right on the pylon, which would be a touchdown because the pylon is the end zone. And I do think that was a good call by the, by the officials that that was a touchdown. I really thought he got in there. Just a great individual effort by Zach Mossbarger. 31-yard run, and it looked like maybe a five- or six-yarder at best. What an effort. Here comes Bolt for the conversion. Puts it up, puts it through. We'll take a break. That is one of your Ohio High Point high points of the game, brought to you by the Ohio High Point Career Center. What a run by the little engine that won't stop. Zach Mossbarger, 31 yards over the left side. We'll take a break. This game is all even. 6.20 to go in the opening half on the McDonald's of Bell Fountain High School football scoreboard. Bell Fountain 7 to Cups to 7. Chiefs will kick it away to the Arrows after this on 1390 the Bell. Back deep for the Arrows. 20, Kyle Sandy, and 36, Jeremy Strahan. Kicking off for the Chieftains, 49, Connor Dunn. Kickoff brought to you by Vicario's Pizza. North Main, Bellbound, 599-4511. Great pizza, salads, and subs. Just had one of their subs yesterday. Dunn boots it away. Pretty good kick. And it will roll into the end zone. That's what he likes to do. The Cubs will have to start at the 20. There's a touchback. And it's split the return members between Gilbert and Tecumseh's Kyle Sanning. So Tecumseh will start at the 20. 7-7 seven, seven our score. 6-20 to go in the opening half. Bellbound has tied it up and makes some big plays. It's kind of picks up the stadium a different feel right now would, would you agree yeah i think so we'll see if mossbarger's touchdown kind of ignites the rest of the bell fountain team that was really an exciting play he was able to pull loose from several tacklers there and get that ball in for the score new game now with a 7-7 score and in motion galt taking a long count wants to throw out into the flat 
Caught by Gilbert. Gilbert knocked out of bounds. And trying to see who made the tackle on the near side. Matt Brinson getting up there on the sidelines, number seven. Just a quick pass. Yeah, it was uh, Riley Galt sort of rode uh, that Smelko there into the line like it was going to be the option and take the handoff, and then he straightened up because he came down the line there and flipped that pass out to Gilbert. Nicely designed play. Picked yep. up seven. almost eight yards. Seven-yard gain into the flat, and that's where there's nobody's at because uh, you got to respect the fullback run, and they had some other players on the left side of the formation. That's a nice play. Now Gilbert goes in motion. they will give it to Smelko again, the bulldozer, and he got about five. First down run to the 32. And he just kind of runs with reckless abandon. A lot of times he'll run with his back towards the defense. That's right. That's the key to that wing T offense is you have to have a real solid physical fullback who can keep the middle of the defense honest, and Smelko certainly fills the bill, does that job nicely. I think he'd rather run you over than uh, <laughs> make some kind of a cut. 7-7 seven, seven our score, 5.50 to go in the second quarter here on 13-9 to the bell. Galt and shotgun now, and the receiver John's off the field late. He, just, he never got set. He just kept running towards the bench after they already came to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Looks like that Carlisle Tecumseh is trying to get a timeout here. But there is a penalty flag on the play. We've seen an illegal substitution. This was uh, an illegal take them off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Referee's going to come over and tell us what happened. He's calling it a... Maybe delay a game? Or illegal participation, maybe? I think so. It's going to be a five-yard penalty on the arrows. The flag was against the it can't be the illegal substitution, because that's a five-yard deal. Right. Uh, looks to me like... Uh, yeah, substitution infraction on the arrows. Helps the Chiefs set yes. up a first and 15. Yes, it does. Five-yard chunk. Brought to you by the Sheriff's Office. The key goes in motion right to left. Dalton shotgun again. Wants to roll out. Throws out into coverage, and the ball over the head of the receiver. There was instant coverage on McKee. He's been followed since he got off the bus because he makes so many touchdowns for them. And now it's second and 15. Pretty good coverage in the flat by Connor Hill. I think even if McKee catches it over on the left sideline, he gets a couple of yards at most. I think so, too. Connor Hill you know, we've talked about him last week as our Patrizzi's Pizza Player of the Week last week down at Shawnee for his fine effort on both sides of the ball. And he's out there in a strong safety position and real good coverage on McKee, who's a fine athlete, played a lot of football for the Arrows over the last four years and was able to force the incompletion and force it to come to the end of a second and 15 situation. Second and 15. And... Some movement by the arrows, no penalty. They just look like they're confused, and I think Coach Massey wants a timeout. We'll take a timeout. 5.29 to go in the second quarter on the McDonald's of Belfound High School football scoreboard. Belfound 7, Tecumseh 7. More after this on 13.90 to Bell. Back by popular demand, the Pumpkin Pie Blizzard at Dairy Queen. Come in and try yeah, the Pumpkin Pie Blizzard this October and November. Stop by Dairy Queen in Belfountain and enjoy one today. Also, the 2008 yearbooks go on sale Monday. If your engine transmission Monday. isn't running the way it should, and you're not prepared to invest the cash in a different vehicle, let Jacobs Auto Repair on Dow Avenue put miles back into the vehicle you're driving now by installing a Jasper remanufactured engine or transmission. Jasper engines and transmissions back their products with a nationwide warranty of 36 months, 75,000 miles, parts, and labor. Call Jacobs Auto Repair at 592-7233 and ask for a Jasper remanufactured product. That's Jacobs Auto Repair on Dow Avenue at 592-7233. Welcome back to the Hot Stadium. Chieftain football every week, home and away on 13-9 to the bell with Kevin Bragg on Bill Temple. Heroes use their second time out of the half. They have one remaining. Chiefs have all three remaining. 529 to go in the second quarter. Bell found him to come to tied up with sevens on the McDonald's of Bell Fountain High School football scoreboard. And the Arrows now second and 15 will scrimmage from their own 27. Chiefs adjust their defense. Here comes the counterplay. And again, the running back shaking through defenders. Got about nine yards. Another nifty run that time Number nine, by Dustin, Dustin Holmes. Holmes. There on the carry. And really, the Chiefs are just having a little bit of trouble getting off their blocks because 
certainly seem like there's enough black shirts around those <laughs> ball carriers on I that agree. counter play that you can't believe that he could even wiggle through there. We had a good, real look, good look at that one. And it comes to ball carriers are just real patient. They wait for those blocks to set up, and then they cut off of them. Gilbert and uh, on that play, Holmes. And, and at number two, Aaron Lokai's done a real good job of that. But we haven't seen too much of him lately, number two. Uh, hasn't been getting the ball, isn't in there right now, and that's a good thing for the Chiefs because he was hurting them early. In motion goes Gilbert. Straight give to Smelko. Smelko didn't get anything. Not this time. Tried to kind of bounce it outside. That's not his best game. There was no running lane up the middle, and he got maybe one, fourth and five, and here comes comes his punt team, fourth and five at the Tecumseh. 38 and Mark Duffy with another play in junior defense event. I got to think he's going to be an all-league kid. I think he's had an excellent year. I think so, too. Duffy's had a, a terrific year. I, I really can't see how you could leave either of the Bell Fountain defensive ends off of the all-league team. Both uh, Mitch Ren and Mark Duffy have been two of the finer defenders that we've seen, certainly in the uh, CBC this year. Comes to ready to punt it. Standing at their 27. High punt, taken by Mossbarger. Mossbarger looking for a seam, and Mossbarger brought down around his own 37, but not a bad return. He returned at about nine yards. I think the punter was Kyle Jeffers. Tackle that time made by the arrows, Jordan Jones. First and 10 for the Chiefs at their own 37. Well, Zach Mossbarger, what's he meant to the Chiefs this year? Oh, he's been a spark plug. There's no question about it. And really tonight, he's ignited the Chiefs, really picked them up when they needed it. We're a little flat there in the early going, and he's definitely the one guy who comes out there, and you know what he's going to do. He's going to play hard, and he's going to be very consistent running with that north-south campus and get up the field, and he has really picked up the Chiefs here tonight. 3.51 to go in the second quarter. We're tied at sevens. Mossbarger's in motion. And here comes Morgan wanting to run option. Morgan looking to keep it, still looking to keep it kind of bobbled in and he'll finally be brought down after he got maybe a yard and a half. He ran a long ways east-west but really could never get squared up the field. That will bring up second and about eight. Do you really hustle here if you're the Chiefs? 3.30 to go in the opening half. 7-7 seven, seven our score. I think the Chiefs can play it forward to play a little deliberate, see what, what happens with the field position that they have. Uh, Morgan really wanted to pitch to Agler there in the early going but Arrows did a nice job, job of stringing it out, taking the pitch man away from him, forcing Morgan to eat the ball and, and turn it up. And really, I think that the Tecumseh defense has played Keith Morgan about as well as any defense we've seen so far this year. They're really obviously keying on him and trying to take away Keith Morgan. And their linebackers play right at the line of scrimmage. Here comes the give to Egler. Egler looking to run wide, and Egler brought down after a gain of about two. Third and seven, another nice tackle. Hey, you're, you're right about that, Bill. They really do have those linebackers tucked up in there very tight, ready to stop the run. We've seen some other teams walk Canada way back at the beginning of the season, some other teams who have played their linebackers much looser, fearing the speed of uh, Bell Fountain and getting to the corner. But the counts of arrows seem to be pretty comfortable with the people they have on the edge. They can hem in and contain that outside runs by the uh, by the Chiefs and so they're they're playing those backers up tight and making those inside runs that Sean Eckler makes a living on much much more difficult probably Stop explains it. too why Zach Mossbarger's been a real big threat coming back on that counter play right their, their linebackers play right behind the defensive line stoppage on the official here by the clock kind of concerned about the clock 223 to go in the second quarter 7-7 seven, seven our score Coming up later on again tonight, we'll have some awards to give out. The Patrizzi's Pizza Player of the Game, Band Member of the Week, brought to you by Jacobs Auto Repair, the All-Around Awards Student Athlete of the Week, too. Third and about six at the Bell Fountain, 41. You like a pass here? It's an obvious passing situation. We may see Keith Morgan throw. I think I'd like to see us go back to the option again. I, I just think it'll be there. And uh, that's one of those plays that you just keep going to it, and eventually it pops. Here comes Morgan in motion. They're going to throw out to Egler. Egler makes the catch, and then he got hit right away. Good tackle made by Smokel. Actually, the guy in motion said it was Morgan. It was Egler. Egler made that catch on a little swing pass from Morgan, and he got about a yard and felt it by Smelko, fourth at about five. And that was good pursuit by Smelko, but the person who really made the play there for the arrows on defense was Ryan Bartlett, the cornerback, because he had a blocker on him. He was able to fight through that blocker and get a pad on Sean Egler, disrupt even the catch, and uh, that allowed the pursuit to get to him. It was a nice play call trying to just flare Egler out of the backfield there and get it in the ball in space. 
but the arrows were ready for it. Pulper, under some pressure, gets it away, and it will roll down the far sidelines and literally roll out like a top, like it's supposed to. He I got guess. the good watermelon roll yeah. there, I think. The watermelon roll to the 23. Pretty good punt by Pulper, who was under some duress. He punts it for that time about uh, 36 yards, and the best thing, it was a 36-yard net. That's right, Jason Brown, past the young man on the helmet, and says good job, and uh, backs up the arrows here. We haven't seen any explosive playmaking really out of either side here tonight. It's been uh, much more of a uh, battle in the trenches. First and 10. 23. Galt does want to pass. Has some pressure. Throws over the middle of the field. And McKee makes the catch. Got belted, but nonetheless got about 19 yards on a deep square. And you know, it's going to McKee, and you still sometimes have a hard time stopping. Tackle there by Sean Egler. And I think that shows just uh, how much Coach Jason Brown respects Josh McKee as an athlete. That he's taken Sean Egler off the offense. Sean's played very little defense this year and put him out there, and he looks like he's told him, you know, you follow Josh McKee wherever he goes. If he goes and gets a hot dog, you ask him if he'd like relish or mustard. <laughs> Good idea. Here comes Galt running a run option left. Flips through a couple of tackles, and he gets out of bounds on the far sideline. He got maybe four or five yards up towards midfield. For a sophomore quarterback, I've been impressed with Bradley Galt. Yeah, he is a nice player. He's got good athleticism. He's real good poise uh, when he takes the snap back there. Doesn't seem to get flustered and goes through his options and his progressions. And he's kept his arrows attack moving, playing mistake-free football. He's a real asset for Coach Massey. Over there. And after that big chunk, a big 20-yard pass to McKee, you can maybe attack the field here. 59 seconds to go in the half, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And we have McKee down here, split wide with Egler on him. Throughout in the flash of Smokel. Smokel brought down. What a tackle by Steinhelfer. And Smokel looks like he was tackled in an awkward way. He looks like he's hurt. And just the way he kind of landed, he kind of got bent backwards. He did. And he's, he's going to go off. The, looks like he's uh, maybe going to stay on the field. He shakes his head. He's coming off for one play. Smelko is. He's now jogging off the field. He's going to be okay. Favors that leg a little bit. But uh, looks pretty healthy as he trots over to the sidelines. Good no to see. Great play there by... Number 15, Ron Steinhelfer for the Chiefs. Great coverage brought down Melko with their little or no gain and will force the arrows into a third and seven situation. And he's not easy to tackle because, like we said, he's physical. Ron Steinhelfer's been a real nice player, and especially in pass coverage for the Chiefs. Galt. He's got pressure, tries to get out of it, and brought down. And I know, now I think they'll probably use a timeout if they want. 30 seconds to go in the half. Man, I don't think they're going to stop it now. That's your classic coverage sack there, uh, Bill. Um, as, as Galt rolled out there to the right, he really wanted to go underneath to his running back there. And Ron Steinhelfer, again, was between the quarterback and the, and the running back. Excellent coverage on the underneath route. Forced Galt to eat the ball, and then by that time, the uh, pursuit caught up to him, Duffy and his friends, and dropped him for a big loss. So, you know, really two back-to-back -back outstanding plays there by Bill Fountain linebacker Ron Steinhelfer. 23 seconds to go in the half. We'll keep it right here. Timeout taken by the Chiefs. Fourth at about 15. That's my sack. One of the Ohio High Point High Points of the game brought to you by the Ohio High Point Career Center. And maybe Galt did a good thing, his coaches might say, because he didn't didn't just chuck it up for grabs. Too. Yeah, he could have gotten himself real trouble if he tried to force the issue there. So better to take the sack. But I'm sure that the Chiefs now, having forced the uh, arrows into this situation, 23 seconds to go, force a punt put on a play here, maybe a punt return, or even try to go after one and get a big punt block and see if you couldn't just put something on here uh, right before the end of the half. Just 23 seconds to play here before intermission. Fourth and about 15. He, the punter, gets off a low one. I think he just wanted to kick it away from everybody. And Morgan makes the catch around his 32, dancing. Still tries to get out of a couple of tackles, and he got about four. And Tecumseh just had great pursuit. Morgan picked it up on the bounce. Nine seconds to go in the half. Chiefs tied up 7-7, have the ball at their own 36. 30, eh, maybe make it their own 35. Do you, do you do much your fancy, or you just run the football? That's only nine seconds to go, isn't it? ball is far enough out that the Chiefs probably don't have to fear any kind of really bad play on their end. I think uh, that with the speed that the Chiefs have and Jeff Rollins and got a, any 
plays in your bag of tricks here. Of course, the Chiefs are well known for the hook and ladder play. It may be a good time to run one, but uh, I think we got Jeff Rollins going out far white to the wide side of the field there. He might just uh, leave it long for him. They really don't have too much coverage out there on him as Mossberger comes in motion. Out there comes Morgan on a shotgun snap. He just keeps it himself. Morgan looks to reverse his field. Now trying to get down the sideline. Get the... Morgan down the sideline. Just the 15. Shotgun snap. Morgan got a couple of blocks, flipped through a couple of tackles, and he scores on the final play of the half. Sean Egler, who just absolutely leveled the last man on the outside there to spring Keith Morgan to the sidelines. Just a deep leader. Got Morgan loose down the sidelines for a touchdown there. Like I said, Bill, uh, run it. <laughs> yeah, what a block by... Egler, that was the final spring, right? That's right, and that was a devastating block. Egler came out of nowhere. He wasn't even in position to block and took out that air defender. Bolt conversion is up, and it's good. What a way to end the half. Keith Morgan takes it 65 yards on a shotgun snap, ran up the middle about the first 10 yards. We see him sometimes go left. That time he said, I'll try it right. Went down the far sidelines, and he was going to get maybe another 10 or 15. Who knows with him? He might have still taken it to the distance, but then... Belfound proudly presents the Pride of the Tribe, the Belfound High School Chief and Marching Band. to welcome Mr. Fred Boring, BHS principal to our school and community. Tonight the band will be performing our traditional script chase and guests will be dotting the eye this evening.
with an assist from Principal Bory. for the arrows, 75, Carson Williams. Here's an outside kick, or well, rather a miss. <laughs> he, only, he only went four Everybody yards with it. I thought it might be an onside kick by the kicker as we were starting the second half kick off. I think right it was going to be an onside kick. I think that's what he intended to do, but... Uh, he just uh, was going to nub it there 10 yards and see if this whole uh, front line of Bell Fountain would retreat and follow it along like you sometimes see kickers do and fall on it, but he uh, didn't uh, come near the 10-yard requirement. I'm not sure, so. but it, it kind of looked like an onside, but his first one earlier also kind of looked like one. You know what I mean? He's just trying to kick it so short. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to uh, call it a legal procedure on... Tecumseh. Tecumseh and, and back it up five Legal yards. And you might, them to kick over. So. You, you, you might think it was an onside, which it may have been, but I'm going to say he's going to do it very similar in this one again, in the fact that it will just be like a 10 or 15 yard squibber. Yeah, and the kicker hung his head sort of more out of embarrassment than anything, so it, it may have just been a whiff. Carson Williams, big sophomore kid. He'll put his right foot into it. And another short one. Takes a high hop, though. Ball still loose. And Egler picks it up around his 26. Now look at a reverse field. Egler into the secondary of the defense. Secondary tier of the kickoff coverage. And he got about uh, you know, 10 yards on the return. One of the arrows down back at the Bell Fountain. 23. That may be Garth Gilbert. Number 28, I think, Mike McGee, McKee on that. I think it was 28, not 26. Mike McKee. He took a big hit from Keith Morgan on a block there. Morgan returned in the favor for Egler. Uh, the first play of the half there. That was a, a big shot from Keith Morgan on Mike McKee over there, and he's still a little worse for wear for it. First it's hit for the Chiefs, thrown 37. Actually, not a bad kick by Carson Williams to start this second half. 11.52 to go in the third quarter. 14-7 Chiefs lead the arrows. We're doing that squibby, goofy-looking kick. Yeah. He got some pretty good distance out of it. He definitely took some crazy bounces there, and it tipped off of Egler's hands. He was able to then corral it and get his hands on it and control it. Boy, if it had taken another hop, it would have been a crazy scramble for the ball there. Got McKee up on his feet. He's going to hobble off, but there's good help from a couple people not putting any weight on that leg. 
And Bet Smelker, who got hurt in the second quarter just briefly. That's McKee, he, number 20. Right. Gilbert's right down here in front of us, still playing his defensive halfback position. So. Right, he's the one you commented on at the end of the second quarter that really took Dang, the block. That Mr. Eggler there. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a good way to put it. That's right. He's introduced. 65-yard jaunt by Morgan to end the half. Now the Chiefs will scrimmage from their own 37 to start the third quarter. Winner in motion. Morgan gives off to Eggler. Eggler hit right away, and he lost about two. Boy, that time it looked like there was really <laughs> no blocking. There were about four white jerseys right away, right, second and 12. Three, George Jones was in the backfield almost as soon as the ball was handed off and put a real strong form tackle on Sean Eggler there and took him down for a one-yard loss, making it second 11 for the Chiefs. Second and 12 for both out. Mount fans way, made their way into the stands. 14-7 our score. Early third quarter, 11-20 to go. Chiefs lead the arrows. Morgan in shotgun. Running backs will flank him. And he'll give off to Egler. Egler got about five to his own 40. And make it four. Third and about seven. A big third down, I think, for the Tecumseh defense here to maybe get a stop. Yeah, this is definitely a big series for the arrows. They don't want to fall any further behind right here. Uh, to start the second half and got the Chiefs in a third and long situation which is what I'm sure Coach Matthew would like to see here to start the second half we'd like to see a, a couple first down passes out of the Chiefs here as we go into the second half loosen things up past week that sometimes helps them open up that running game moving around as the Tecumseh defensive front Mossbarger goes in motion here comes maybe the option Morgan wants to run it. Morgan trying to get to the side. Breaks through one tackle. Takes it right by his own bench, and he got about six and a half. I think it will bring up fourth and one, and here comes the punt team. He tried to get as much as he could. He just basically ran out of width, which stopped his vertical run. Yeah, it looks like they're going to spot it. Uh, taking a lot of care here to spot it. In fact, they're going to spot it on the sidelines and bring the chains all the way over. It's going to be that close. To uh, first down, I think Coach Brown was over there um, selling in on the situation. Selling the, the, That's right. I think he's probably uh, short though. Bring the, uh, if it's all if the it's, way across. If it's fourth and like a foot, any chance you would go for it? I think he might. I think he's thinking about it. So he wants to see how far Coach Brown wants to see how far it actually is, and we really can't tell from here because it's right down on the Chiefs bench in front of us, and and you really cannot see. I can see the ball now through the through the Chiefs. Less than a yard, the referee reaches down and picks up the chain links and now carry it out to the middle of the field. And it's, it's only about eight to ten chain links uh, for a first down, but Coach Brown's already waving that punt team onto the field. Austin Pulper coming out to kick it away for the Chiefs. Well, you like to look at all the stats here. What do you, what, what do, you do here? Or is this a tough well, I, I can tell you the economics professor from Berkeley would go for it because uh, that's what he, this is a situation where he's saying that, that football teams really kind of cheat themselves by not uh, taking a little more risk. And uh, really, you know, you know, you're looking at it. I know Coach Peitzmeier is a big believer that uh, you can get a, get a foot on just about any quarterback sneak. So, um, you know, it's nearly midfield, and, and it would be a little bit of a gamble here, but... No, that's, that's why uh, Coach Jason Brown is the coach, and we're not. So he's going to kick it away, play it safe, and turn it over to his defense. Yep, Paul for up punt it, standing at his own 35. Waiting for the long snap. Gets a good snap. Has a little bit of pressure again. Gets off a low one. Will go over by the sideline to go out of bounds. Right around the 23-yard line. So you know, they'll make the cups to go along the field. And... I could see I could see both the pluses and minuses both ways. I think if I ever got the chance to wear that headset, I probably would punt it though. I got a gun. You know, your defense right is pretty there. good. Yeah. Through Bell Fountain. Anything can happen on the snap. You can have a bad snap, you can give them on your side of the fifty, and that, that's the percentage play, but uh, boy, I tell you, it wasn't very long. Quarterback Galt sends his man in motion. Now Galt gives off to his running back who not too giddy about going down. <laughs> and referees are not real anxious to blow the whistle there. Gilbert was, uh, that was Gilbert with the ball. Yeah. He was stood up and, and the Chiefs had stopped his forward progress a good several seconds before the referees actually blew the whistle, but they wrestled into the ground. It's a very short gain of a, uh, it was actually about four yards there. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert, Gilbert's a tough, hard-nosed player. 
Yeah, the, the Arrows have a lot of good backs. I'm really surprised that we haven't seen more of number two, Aaron Lokai, who really made a lot of, of good plays there in the early going, and yeah. we really have not seen him since midway through the first quarter. And here comes a give to the fullback. Smelko, who slips through one tackle. Smelko cut down by Nick May, who made a nice tackle. The Chiefs maybe think the ball is quarter free, but I don't think so. First down run to the 39-yard line, 12-yard game by Smelko. Move yeah, the chains. May really upended Smelko there. He caught him in the legs and sent him somersaulting through the air. And I think as Smelko hit the ground, the ball came free. But the side judge came racing in there and pointing at the ground, blowing it dead and saying the ground cannot cause a fumble. And the arrows will retain possession, scrimmage first and 10 from their own 39. Well blocked play on that little dive for Smelko. He just rumbled. 14-7 our sure that was not a school. pleasant sight for Nick May. Here comes the counter to Gilbert. He didn't get anything. Just kind of bottled up the defensive line that time. And maybe a yard into the 40. Second and nine. Belfound leads it. 14-7 over the arrows. 8.50 to go in the third quarter. And number 64, Darren Brown in there on that play. It's the first time we've called his name tonight. A good play by... Right there, and actually, let's check that. It's number 64, Jordan Vermillion, who's mm -hmm. in on that pass. Second and 10. You have any, any spot at all? No movement. Second and 10 at 39. Golf again. Under center. And good defense that time. After a game of about five. Tyler Williams inside linebacker for Bell Fountain. Doing nicely to that play. Taking down Holmes for a short game. Third and, uh, still third and five, would you say? Let's see. It looks good. They're moving the sticks over there on the far side of the field. And yeah, it's going to be third and almost exactly five. And now another big third down. 7.50 to go in the third quarter. Chiefs lead at 14-7. Tecumseh has not been easy. To be honest, I thought it would be a little easier, but don't underestimate the Compass program. They've been good for them. They're five and three. They've had a seven five hundred season, and the teams they've lost to certainly have a fine record this year. Well, here comes pressure from Baden now. Galt trying to cut it upfield, still trying to run wide, and he's tackled for a loss. Galt kept rolling to his left, wanted to pass, I think, but just couldn't find anybody open. And the guy that really made the play, even though he didn't get the sack, was. Chris Badenhop, who got pressure right up the middle immediately. Yeah, he did. He really flushed Galt there and then forced him to, to step up as he rolled to his left. And Jordan Vermillion chased him all the way across the field. Great hustle by Vermillion to take him down for a, about a three-yard loss. Fourth down, Fourth down and eight. Coach Jason Brown's decision to punt the ball away should pay off for the Chiefs here as they should get the ball back in good field position. At least no worse than they were before they kicked it away. McKee gets off a decent punt. Excellent punt. Mossbarger makes the catch around his own 20. Gets a block from Morgan. Mossbarger looking to spin up field, and he got about 11. Boy, Keith Morgan had another nice block for his teammate in the 11-yard return. 6.44 to go in the third. Chiefs up by seven, trying to get their offense going again. Coming up in the post-game show, we'll have our Patrice's Pizza player of the game next week. The Chiefs home against Dayton 7, so they finish the season with back-to-back -back home games. I'm sure they'd like to play week 11 at Dodd Stadium, which I think is possible. It sure is, and you know, a win here tonight would go a long way towards doing that. You know, if the Arrows climb back into this one and would emerge with a victory, it'd probably be pretty difficult for the Chiefs to have a home playoff game. Here comes Egler in the shotgun. Egler into the secondary. He's got a chance to take it. 50, 45, 40. He'll take it the rest of the way inside the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Another big play by the Chiefs. They split Morgan out. The only guy that was in the backfield in shotgun was Egler. A snap to that running back slash quarterback, and he goes 70 yards over the left side, then cut it back up the middle of the field and just outraced the Arrows defense. Sean Egler with another rushing score and one of his longest ones of the season. 70 yards, and the Chiefs now lead it 20-7 to with 6.31 to go in the third quarter. Once he got to about midfield, had one man to beat, Garth Gilbert, and he just... Outran him to the end zone. Sure did. I, I think he looks pretty healthy, too. What do you think? <laughs> Absolutely. Kick is up by Bolt. It's good. We'll take a break. That's one of our Ohio High Point High Points of the game. Brought to you by the Ohio High Point Career Center. You can learn more at OhioHighPoint.com. Egler might tell Coach Brown, hey, let's put me a quarterback there. He just goes 70 yards in shotgun. We'll take a break on the McDonald's of Bell Fountain High School football scoreboard. It's Bell Fountain 21. to comes to 7. More after this on 1390 The Bell.
14, Josh McKee, and 20, Kyle Sandy, deep for the arrows. 49, kicking off for the Chieftains, Connor Dunn. Brought to you by Vicarios and Josh McKee is dangerous, still loose on the far sidelines and tripped up around his own 42. He returned it about 26 yards. He is the Cubs' big play guy. And the arrows will have to go to work trailing. Just before our last break, Sean Eggler was in shotgun. He's the, he was the only guy in, uh, behind the line of scrimmage. He took the direct snap and went 70 yards for a score. And Bell Fountain now leads it 21-7 as we're Midway through the third quarter here on 13.90 the bell. Chiefs lead the Arrows 21-7 on 1390 WBL Lyle Bell Fountain. And the Arrows go back to work at their own 41-yard line. Galt wants the pass. Throws. Caught by McKee. McKee elusive and he dives forward for a gain of about 11. With all kinds of black shirts around him. But he is tough to stop. And McKee just did a good job of finding the soft spot in that zone. Kind of in between a triangle of three Chiefs. He settled down there. Got made himself a nice target for golf. He zipped the pass to him. He caught it and was able to get ahead for an extra couple of yards and move the sticks for the arrows and take it into the Chiefs' territory there at the Bell Fountain 48. And Galt now in shotgun. They kind of go to the different formation. Here comes a reverse. Maybe a pass. McKee maybe looking to pass. Has pressure. Now looking to reverse he's his field. He's got a lot of room over there. Yes, but he's got a block. Morgan fights off a block and got him after a gain of about nine. Very exciting play. He ran all over the place. A reverse to him. It looked like he maybe wanted to throw over on the right hash. Didn't find anybody open and ran all the way back towards the left sidelines and got about nine yards. And if Morgan doesn't shed his block, or who knows? That could have maybe been a, a long, long play. I think shed is a polite way to put that. Keith Morgan just ran right through that blocker to the uh, ball carrier there. Boy, is he strong. And it was a great play by Morgan. But, yeah, I thought really it looked like the arrows had that whole side field, and that was going to be a huge play for McKee. So great effort there by Keith Morgan. Saves, uh, saves a big play. Second and two. Give to the fullback. And he takes it towards the marker, but I don't think he made it. Back up fullback Ryan Bartlett. Third and about one. How do you like the Cumpston shotgun? Is that kind of their deal? They're not in their element? or they're, they're I think they're a little bit out of their element there. I think they'd rather be up under center and that wing D running that Smelko into the line and the jet sweeps. They had a lot of success with that. Smelko is back in the game. He missed that last play. He's their bell cow back. And I think here on third and less than a yard, that's who we're going to see. Uh, I would be stunned if it's anybody else than him. Uh, actually, it's, stunned, then. yes, the running back running around the left side for a big gain of about 15. Justin Holmes over there on the far sideline and there's a late flag from the side judge over there too. I think it might be a hit out of bounds on the Chiefs. Tyler Williams slaps his hands five, five, five together five in frustration. It was a nice run there. The jet sweep the Dustin Holmes after the fake to Smelko. They hit so much success with that in the first half. Took it for a big gain for the Arrows and it's going to be a personal foul. Late hit on the Chiefs. It's going to Move it even what? closer to the Bell Fountain goal line. I didn't see that, though, unless it was way up to the play. Yeah, okay. the referee threw his uh, hanky about eight miles high in the air, and I was watching it, waiting for it to come down, but uh, I really didn't see the uh, the play either. I think what happened was Tyler Williams just got his momentum going and couldn't pull up at the last minute. Probably a good call, but uh, frustrating one for the Chiefs. And now that 15-yard penalty. Now. And... Here comes the running back, bursting down by the goal line, all the way to the one. And that's Aaron Lokai back in the game. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Right so just that delayed handoff out of the wing tee to Lokai, who's one of the wing backs, finds a little crease in there around the tackle and goes straight ahead for a first down, almost to the goal line. The ball's right down at the one, and, and I just can't understand, Bill, why, why Aaron Lokai spent all that time over on the bench as well, as well as he was playing early in the game, they bring him right back in, and he has success immediately. He seems to be healthy. Three backs behind the quarterback, and touchdown by O'Reilly Gold over center. Takes it in from a yard out, and comes to answers. 4.05 to go in the third here on 1390 the bell, and the arrows 
take their drive. 58 yards, and they're right back at it. 21-13 our score. That's right. This game is far from over. And there was a lineup for the extra point to try to narrow this to a one to a seven-point game. Key will hold it. Here comes Carson Williams to kick it. 21-13 our score. Snap is put down. Kick is up, and it's through. 21-14, our score after the conversion. 4.05 to go in the third quarter on the McDonald's of Belfound High School football scoreboard. Belfound 21, to comes to 14. Chiefs will get it after this on 13.90 the bell. Zach Mossbarger deep from the Chieftains. Carson Williams kicking off for the arrows. Kickoff brought to you by Bacurio's Pizza, North Main Bell Found. Carson Williams to kick it away again to the Chiefs. Comes to back in it though, down by a score. Williams with another wobbler taken by Bell Fountain. And Derek Schmidt went to a knee to pick up that wobbler right around 34. I don't think Coach Brown agrees with the side judge. Maybe his knee was still up according to Jason, but Jason doesn't get a vote. And Chiefs will scrimmage at their own 34. With 4.03 to go the third quarter, Bell Fountain up 21-14. I think Derek Schmidt, the big tackle, was ready for that. When he took off as soon as he got that ball, he was looking for uh for the end zone, so uh, doesn't get a chance to you know, play. Derek Schmidt's played a great year at, at offensive line. Uh, and here with those low kicks, he's done a nice job of fielding them, and he was looking for some yardage there, but unfortunately uh, picked it up on his knee, and the Chiefs will then start still with good field position at their own 34. Morgan in shotgun. And gives off to Fagler, who just moves the pile. Got about nine. I thought maybe one of the running backs moved a little early, but... No flag, and second and one for the Chiefs coming up at the 44. Did you see early movement? Yeah, I thought Zach Mossberger rocked and just danced a little bit there, and uh, he probably got away with one. Uh, but uh, it was close, so ball was snapped in there after, and Colin Rockwell the center uh, gets things moving there, and Egler picks up a first down, 10 yards yeah, in there. exactly a 10-yard gain. And, uh, Bill Fountain needs to answer that fine arrow's touchdown drive. And I think both Morgan and Egler have gone over 1,000 yards this year. I think so. And here comes Egler. Egler bouncing free. Got about six to the Tecumseh 49. And yes, he does look healthy, by the way. You have yeah, to give him a few does. minutes to go. He looks 100%. And once again, we see, as we have often this year, it looks like the Chiefs have made some halftime adjustments. They're getting a much better push on their offensive line now. Really seem to have taken over the game with that big front line of Colin Rockhold and uh, Adam Wonderly up front and, and Josh Anderson, Derek Schmidt, and and Vermillion at the tackle. Morgan and shotgun, second and four at the Tecumseh 49. Here comes a counterplay to Mossbarger. Mossbarger bounces towards the marker to the 45, maybe the 44 and a half with Tecumseh. And have they got the first down? I think so. They're going to move the chains again. Another first down for Mossbarger. I wonder what percentage of Mossbarger runs. And then a first down. I bet it's pretty high. I bet you'd be surprised because it just seems like whenever he gets the ball, the chains are moving. And uh, no, no exception there on that one. He gets north-south in a hurry. That play was well blocked, too, on the counter. Yeah, really offensive line's coming off the ball, yes. really taking over the yes, game. Yeah, I agree. And here comes the give to Egler. Egler looking to cut it back. Egler down the sideline. He'll take it. Inside the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Sean Egler with his second rushing score of the night. Takes that one in from 45 yards out, and Bell Fountain now leads at 27 to 14 with 2.32 to go in the third quarter. That's one of the Ohio high, point, high points of the game, and Egler got it to about linebacker depth, then cut it back like the great backs do, and it wasn't even close. Yeah, there's a lot of running room in there, too. Again, again good block by the inside of the line. Colin Rockhold, Adam Wonderly, Josh Anderson, and, uh, you know, really... Uh, Hardly anyone touched Eckler the whole time, and with his great speed there, no one's going to catch him from behind. Bolt puts up the conversion. He bangs it through. 
We'll take a break. 2.32 to go in the second quarter of the Belfound offense. Really, ever since Morgan broke off the final 65-yarder on the final play of the half, that was late in the second quarter, has been in high gear. Your score on the McDonald's of Belfound High School football scoreboard, Belfound 28, the Cups of 14, another Connor Dunn kick after this on 13.90 the bell. Deep receiver to Cumsett, 14, Josh McKee, 20, Kyle Sandy. 49, Connor Dunn kicking off for the Chieftains. Brought by the Curios and Connor Dunn. Bangs it over by the Tecumseh bench, out of bounds. I don't think he kicked that one squarely. Just had to kind of come up the side and goes out of bounds around the Tecumseh 25 and the arrows on it. I would think will take the penalty and start at their own 35. I think so, too. And it's time for the Belfound defense to come out here and uh, get a stop and get that really hot Chiefs offense back on the field. A little working margin here, but um, I'm sure that Coach Jason Brown would like to see a little bit more space between the Chiefs and uh, Tecumseh, who's played a fine ball game here tonight. Yeah, there's, there, there are scrappy. 28-14, our score Chiefs lead the arrows. 2.32 to go in the third. And uh, you, ha you also get the feeling, like you said, Kevin, that the Belfound offensive line is starting to take over. You know, I think uh, there's another pass caught by McKee. Uh, four defenders wrestle him down, but he got about 14 yards to the to come to 49. One of the Chiefs slow to get up, and that's Nick May, who's been a little thing the last couple weeks. May still down, and now he's going to make a lot of tackles here tonight. A little bit of pain as he winces and comes off the sideline. Degler will replace him at the defensive halfback position. Nope, Degler's now going to come off, and they'll send in number 23, Wasinger. Uh, looks like the officials get everybody set. Wasinger's into the game, and we're good to go. First and ten for the Arrows at their own 49. Found something here with Galt to McKee. Just pitch and catch. Galt again throws. Caught by McKee. Knocked down immediately by Keith Morgan, but McKee, to his credit, took the belting and held on. Yeah, they've got Galt and McKee clearly have practiced that play a lot. It's just a simple hitch by McKee. Drives off his defender and then settles down in the open area there between the Bell Fountain Chiefs and secondary defenders. And Galt zips it into him on a line, and that's two in a row that that combination is connected on. It's about a nine-yard gain there for the Arrows and makes it second and one. And the constant just keeps right, coming right back at the Chiefs. Yeah, they are resilient. Now the smoke will right behind the quarterback. Chiefs show some movement. I don't know if it was offside or not. Second and two prior to the penalty. Penalty of the game brought to you by the Sheriff's Office. Make sure you do not drink and drive. A reminder from the Logan County Sheriff's Office. Penalty is on the Chiefs offside. Five-yard penalty and a first down for the arrows to the bell found 37 and the cups has kind of impressed me with their ability to throw it i did not think you know that they would be able to throw it at that well they did not show that at least in the first half yeah they've really completed some nice passes here on mm -hmm. the last two drives to keep the uh sticks moving of course it helps to have a receiver like josh McKee, yeah. who's got a lot of courage real good hands for yeah. a really sharp route now they run maybe a double move again and the ball dropped by Gilbert, who was maybe running a little wheel route out of the backfield, tried to get past the defense, had a little bit of separation, but the ball was just low and just didn't have enough oomph on it. It will fall incomplete, second and ten for the arrows at the Bell Found 37. Not a bad idea. Real good call. I mean, that was clearly set up by the last two paces, passes to McKee, who did the same thing he had done on the previous two plays, pass plays, run that defender off 12, 13 yards and then come back to a spot and they snuck Gardner out of the backfield behind him tried to get him up the sidelines trying to suck up the safety but Connor Hill the strong safety was running stride for stride with Garner Garner and another good play by Connor Hill forced that incompletion timeout taken any, any equipment timeout Williams has something maybe around his helmet he'll have to go out and 
Jeremy Clifton comes in. 122 to go in the third. Chiefs lead the Arrows 28-14. The Arrows, though, on the march again. Been really impressed with the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, he's a good player, and he's going to have two more years there running that succumbs to offense. And real nice athlete and a handful. Second at 10. Maybe here comes the scissors play to Gilbert, and Gilbert breaking free. Finally brought down, but he's got a first down run to the 25. Well, you know that play's coming up five or six times a game, but it is hard to stop. 13-yard game by Gilbert, first down to the Bell Fountain, 25. That's right. Come clearly is running the wing tee better than anyone we've seen this year. Uh, they've got good crispness in there. Their, their back pads to the hole. Uh, they really know what they want to do, and they, they mix it up real nice between Smelka smashing in the inside and then those counterplays and jet sweeps to running backs like Lokai and and Gilbert. Here comes the toss play to the running back trying to run to the left side. And Connor Hill makes the tackle after about a five-yard gain that time by Dustin Holmes. And the other thing about wing T teams, a lot of the ones that we see over the years, not like they usually have a, a great tailback like an Egler. They have about a bunch of running backs, you know, that are decent. Yeah, they do. And, and certainly there's great depth on Tecumseh at their running back position with Holmes and Gilbert and... Uh, now he's in the game, just I was about to say this, but the back that, that really has hurt the Chiefs is number two, Aaron Lokai, has really made some nice runs and see if they get him the ball a little bit more. Here comes another pitch to Holmes, same play they ran a play ago, and he got about three, third and two at the Bell Fountain 18. That will be the last play of the quarter. Three quarters in the books here at Dodd Stadium on this chilly, windy Friday night, week nine and after three on the McDonald's of Bell Fountain High School football scoreboard. Bell Fountain 28. Tecumseh 14. More after this on 1390 the Bell. Tecumseh 14. Friday night at home against the Devons. This will be senior night for all senior athletes and band members. Back here at Bellbound High School. Chiefs lead the Arrows 28-14 as we begin the fourth quarter with Kevin Bragg on Bill Triple. Thanks to John back in studio control. Don't forget the Buckeyes tomorrow, home against the Spartans. 2.30 pregame on 13-9 to the Bell. Right now, the Bellbound defense is kind of stiffing a little bit. Bellbound's offense is, I think, really picked up after the half, but I not sure you could say the same for their defense. Yeah, the pace is really quick in here in the second half. Both teams have just gone up and down the field. It's been very entertaining, really, really an entertaining game, but uh, really both offenses have dominated. 28-14, Chiefs lead the arrows, but Tecumseh driving third and two. Here comes a counter play to Smoko, and he has just stood up. Pulled no one. Be not a bad idea, but it just didn't work. Forced it about two. Fake the pitch. He he went as if he was going to pitch the Hones again. They had run that play a couple times in a row and then rode the ball back down to the big fullback Smelko, but Chiefs defense sniffed that one out, and they were there to stop him, and it's going to make it fourth down and a long one, maybe short two. This is a big play here as the fourth quarter just gets underway. Uh, it looks like the play clock is not on right now. Game clock's running with the play clock turned off. Back judge will keep that. Now, Galt under center, puts his man in motion. Galt, here comes the toss play to the corner. And Bell oh, is there to get it. To get there. And they spot the short of the first down. Toss play to Holmes, the play that has worked much in the third quarter, will not work in the fourth. And a fourth and two, Tecumseh is turned away by a host of Chiefs, and Bell will take over on downs at their own 16 and a half, they make it the 17-yard line, 11.07 to go in the game, and that may be an Ohio high point, high point of the game and a turning point play in the game. Yeah, the South Fountain secondary really rose to the occasion there. They've spent a lot of time dragging down Smelko and some of these other backs, but that time Connor Hill and Matt Brisson and Nick May were all there, and they stood up uh, Dustin Holmes, who was trying to run that sweep, and stopped him in his tracks a good yard short of the first down. And 
gave the ball over to the Bell Fountain offense, which has been really hot here in the second half. Yes. And here comes Egler. Egler looking to bust free. Egler still on his feet, and he'll be ridden down by Gilbert, who maybe saved a touchdown, but a 15-yard scamper over the left side, stopped on the left hash, and will take it forward to his own 32. Boy, Egler putting together some big yards tonight. Yeah, he's going to have some big numbers, and again, you're right, he was about to escape again. Looked like for a long TD dash, and Gilbert got him up around the shoulders, was able to wrestle him to the ground, but... Boy, you just can't say enough about this Bell Fountain offensive line led by Colin Rockhold and Adam Wonderly, Josh Anderson, Vermillion, and uh, Derek Schmidt. They are really moving the arrows yes. off the ball. Here comes Egler. Egler brought down after a game of about one. Good tackle right at his feet. Second and nine for the Chiefs at their own 33-yard line. 10.30 to go in the football game. Bell Fountain leads at 28-14. And you also have to wonder what, kind of, what it does... Uh, this is mentally the way you feel about yourself if your comes to when you got turned away. 28-21 yeah, is a lot different than 28-14. It sure is. 28-21 um, is anybody's ball game. And they were deep in Bell Fountain territory. It looked like they were going for a score that was going to cut that deficit in half. And Chiefs defense rose up and threw them back. And uh, now they have to deal with Morgan and Egler and something. And here comes Morgan. He'll keep it himself. Morgan just stiff arms the defender. Still trying to get free. And finally... Knocked out of bounds, but a flag thrown by the side judge. No gain for Morgan, but he could have been thrown for a loss, and one of the defensive players just got thrown. Put the heck of a stick arm. What the penalty's all about, I'm not quite sure. It might be a face mask over here on the sideline on uh, Tecumseh, but no, no indication yet from the referee. Let's see what we got here. Well, he sure is a strong... Is a face mask. Five-yarder. Five-yard variety. So Tell you what, what jumps out about Morgan, and you brought it up a few times tonight during the broadcast, is his strength. He's really a strong player. He's, he's like the strongest player on the field, usually. And I asked Coach Brown about that after our Chalk Talk show Wednesday, because we, you talked about his strength, and he, uh, he, Morgan is the third strongest guy in the Bell Fountain. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Which might surprise you if you look at the linemen, you, you, you know, because they're bigger, <laughs> bulky guys, but uh, don't be surprised by Morgan. 195 pounds of muscle. <laughs> Hand off to Egler. Egler looking to reverse field. Egler shaking through tackles, and Egler will finally be brought down at the 48. But what a run. Takes that one for about 16, 17 yards. Rips it off for a 17-yard rumble and another first down. Egler looks, uh, he, he looks dominant. I mean, to me, this looks like week, week one again. Yeah, he does. He has really taken over this game along with the Bell Fountain offensive line. and. Seems to be gaining yards and will now. Back to Keith Morgan, talking about him. You know, of course, he's verbally committed to Bowling Green to play his college football. And I, I really think you're going to see Keith Morgan play on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of his ball skills, but certainly he's a strong run supporter. And uh, Here comes Egler again. Egler got maybe one and a half to two as he somersaults down. I could see maybe Egler popping another one before this game ends. You know, the Tecumseh defense has been out there some. I, I, time of possession is probably somewhat even in this in the second half, but uh, they are blocking very well, and I would not be surprised to see him pop another one. Yeah, I think that uh, it's just a matter of time here, as long as the Chiefs can hold on to the ball and stay on schedule, not make mistakes, because uh, they've really worn down the Tecumseh front, leaning on them this whole game, and Sean Egler has just seemed to get stronger as the game's gone, gone longer. 28-14, Chiefs lead it early in the fourth. Here comes Mossbarger on a counterplay, and Mossbarger takes it inside the 40. First down run to the 37, and I'll tell you what, I thought he showed a great burst. He exploded through the hole. He sure did, and uh, surprise, surprise, I think we're going to have another first down here for the Chiefs. Zach Mossberger runs first down. You're right, he is Mr. First Down. He's so versatile, too. The Chiefs really do so much with him. They put him in motion. They throw him the ball. They give him the ball. They pitch him the ball. And, uh, you know, you never kick return, return, punt, punt kick return. return, covers on, on kick coverage. He's really a very versatile player. And, you know, he's really, again, it was his touchdown run that really sort of ignited yeah. the Chiefs here tonight. Here comes Egler. Egler looking to get a little bit of a seam. And he got maybe three. Pretty good job by the linebackers that time. And the Tecumseh defense tackle finished off by... Derek Dingle, one of their outside backers. Gain of about three, second and seven at the Tecumseh 35. Chiefs lead at 28-14, 8.05 to go in the game. Indian Lake leading Benjamin Logan last we heard third quarter, 20 to nothing Lakers. The Lakers are making a playoff push. They uh, get that big win over Urbana a few weeks ago. That'll be good for a boatload of Harvard computer points. Currently sitting eighth in the region, region 10, and we'd love to see 
two Logan County teams, Dave Coburn's and Pine Lakers team in a playoff yeah. as well. They never quit. Here comes Eggler. Oh, <laughs> they maybe uh, spied on the playbook. Three guys were waiting as he got the handoff from Morgan, and he lost about a yard and a half, third and eight. Uh, the offensive line's been great up since halftime, but uh, that play, they didn't block really anybody. Yeah, Smelko there made a really great play. I think he was a little bit of a run blitz there. It's, uh, it's come to taking a few more chances, trying to get into the Chieftain's backfield and get Eggler stopped before he can get going. It's going to be a third and nine situation here, so... Uh, We'll see if, if the Chiefs have any passing options up there. Please. Mossbarger goes in motion. And they will give it to Mossbarger. Mossbarger trying to get wide, and he takes it to about the 35-yard line. Tackle that time made by the arrows. Jordan Jones, junior V defensive end, and now it's fourth. And about seven. Yeah, fourth and seven and a half, and at the Tecumseh 35, Coach Brown says bring out the punt team. Yep, that was a much better series there for Tecumseh. They're going to be backed up, it looks like, and have a long field to deal with. But that was a crucial drive that the Arrows were going to stay in this game. Obviously, here is the fourth quarter. It keeps moving along. Tecumseh cannot, cannot afford to fall further behind than they are currently 28-14. to 14. Here comes the rush, and it's blocked. Yes, it is. Taking in the air. And Tecumseh may take it for a touchdown. Blocked. They pick it up around the 50 and going in for the score inside the 15, 10, 5, Touchdown by the Touchdown Arrows. Like number 20, Kyle Sanning caught yep. that ball in the air. Blocking, blocked Austin Pulfer's punt. Sanning was right there on the spot to catch the ball in the air. And then there was no no Bell Fountain uh, defenders anywhere between him and the goal line. He streaked 60 yards for the touchdown. Oh, my. Coach Clark is just going bananas. That's a different game. Yeah, changes the game. 28-20, 6 9 to go in the football game. And... Tecumseh right back in the game. Goes back to your Berkeley economics <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Go for it down. What do you hate said? Actually, you think uh, there's only three things can happen. Two of them are bad. Well, well, that's uh, passing, wasn't it? Yeah, it's passing. <laughs> and here comes the extra point. Did it get deep enough? It did no. not. Wide right. Missed by Williams. Tecumseh curse to the Rams. We'll keep it right here. Kicking game. It's never a given. Chiefs punch, blocked, and it really wasn't Austin Pulper's fault. He just <laughs> yeah. had major pressure. Had two. Tecumseh arrows come straight up the middle there. Austin Pulper never really had a chance. And Tecumseh smothered the punt. And unfortunately for the Chiefs, it, sometimes the ball bounces your way and sometimes it doesn't. That time it definitely bounced the arrows way right in the arms of Kyle Sanning. And he knew what to do with it. He set sail for the goal line. There was no one between him and the end zone. He took it right in. But, uh, you know, Tecumseh's kicking game is kind of teetered on the edge the entire evening of their squib kickoffs, and, and their extra points have certainly scored no style points here tonight, but have been effective up until then. And that's a crucial miss. Makes it an eight-point game instead of a seven-point game. And 28-20, uh, Chiefs lead the arrows. arrows. If they were able to score another touchdown, they have to go for two to even this game. Right. They're still hanging around, though. How things could change just on one play because if Austin Paul gets the punt away, I think the Cubs is probably going to start around their 15 ish. He's punting at the right. Cubs at 35. Back them way up. Right, but we'll say 15, make it 28 14. They have to go all the way down for a touchdown. Comes the onside kick, too. That's what it looks like. Carson Williams will try the onside. Ball's up in the air, still high, still loose, still loose, and it will just go out of bounds. Uh, well, maybe not. Chiefs get the ball all the way back at the 20. Seven yard line. Well, this Carson Williams might not kick him deep, but he knows how to hit that point of the ball and make it take a <laughs> huge hop. He really can take it, get it off the ground there, and get that. What you're looking for is that big second bounce, and he's he's almost perfected it. I mean, every kick that he's done has been like that, and that was a perfect onside kick, high in the air, and a mad scramble for it over there on that far sideline. The Chiefs are just Why? lucky to get on. Let me it. ask you though about the kicking game here. Kicking game kind of getting tightened here in this fourth quarter. Not sure who recovered the ball, but Bill Powell started their own 29 up by 8, and their offense was really chugging along before they were forced to punt there. But uh, why would you onside kick with over six minutes to go? I mean, basically, they don't kick it deep anyway. Okay. So, uh, okay. you know, it's really not giving up too much there. And, you know, that, that ball gamble. pointed on both ends. It bounces really funny. And, obviously, uh, Carson Williams is quite skilled at kicking the ball in that style. Here comes Eggler over right guard. He got about four, second and six. 
5.50 to go in the football game. Chiefs lead the arrows 28-20, but one thing about Tecumseh, and this is the way they remind me a little bit of Indian Lake, they, regardless of the scoreboard, they're playing you toe-to-toe -to -toe the whole way. Yeah, they're a gritty bunch there, and there's no give up in them, and they're uh, definitely excited now and have a little bit of momentum going their way, and Keith Morgan and Sean Egler and Zach Mossbarger need to stamp that out right here, right now, and pick up a few first downs get the Chiefs offense reestablished. Second and six at the Bell Fountain, 32. Morgan in shotgun. Morgan gives off to Egler. Egler trying to move the pile. He got maybe three and a half or four. That will bring up a big third down right around the Bell Fountain, 37. And again, I thought Mossberger went a little early. Either he leaves early or everybody else just is a little bit slower. Yeah, yeah he um, certainly looks to me like he brought a little bit. <laughs> it's just so close. But there's many flags tonight. It's been a well-played game by the Chiefs. They really have had very few penalties. Uh, personal foul on one run and maybe a face mask earlier in the game. But What do you like, 32? What, what do you like to run here? Uh, I want Egler right in the middle. I just give it to Egler straight ahead. That bread and butter play. You got Mossbarger and Egler flanking Morgan. And they That's will Egler. do as you want. Egler goes right towards the marker. He got about three and a half first down. The way he's running, he's awfully hard to stop if all you need is a yard. Right. Another play I like there, I think I would go with yours if I stay up for my top vote getter. But another play I love, I love on third and short is the option. You, you take Morgan to the wide side towards us. Ooh. I don't like horizontal running on third and one. I okay. want to point, point my running back straight down the field on that. I, I like the option in a lot of situations, but, but that, you know, in the middle of the field, I, that's not one of them. One thing we've seen from the Chiefs tonight is we've seen almost uh, exclusively a, a lot of four wideout formations tonight. There really hasn't been much tight end, although Brand Fields is in there now. At the right now he is. For the Chiefs. And here comes Mossbarger over the left side. Mossbarger into the secondary. Mossbarger still on his feet and finally wrestled down. Right around the Decatur 39. What a nice run by Moss Parker. He takes it for 20 yards. Well, that three-headed monster for the Chiefs since tonight with uh, Morgan and Egler and Moss Parker. I wouldn't be surprised if all three of them are pushing up towards 100 yards in this game. Total, total uh, rushing. Overall, I would say that uh, we've seen more balance out of the Bell Fountain running game here tonight than any other game this season. And they really got the arrows back on their heels right now. It's a... Chiefs try to put this game away against these gritty, gritty arrow bunch here with 3.50 to go in the fourth quarter and a 28-20 Bell Fountain lead. First and 10. Here comes Egler. Look at the dance. Egler takes it into the hole and got about two and a half, three to the 36. 3.40 to go and the game clock is now a factor. Chiefs lead the arrows 28-20 here late in the fourth quarter. Maybe that's another reason why uh, Coach Massey on side of it. There were over six minutes to go at that point, but maybe he thinks that it's just going to be so hard to stop the Chiefs and get the ball back. Yeah, it's probably so. The Chiefs really have a strong ground game, which late in the fourth quarter is a real advantage to shorten the game and uh, run out the clock. And right now, Coach Brown would just be content to hold on to the ball and, and run down that remaining time. I don't think we're going to see another punt. Mossbarger in motion. And Morgan will keep it himself. Morgan looking to get outside. Morgan still on his feet. He'll take it inside the 25, 20. Cuts it inside the 15, 10, 5, and he's knocked out right around the 2. What a run by Keith Morgan. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Takes it for 34 yards and just kept bouncing off defenders. And now the Chiefs will go double tight wishbone on first and goal right around the two-yard line. And a great effort by Tecumps even to get over there and knock him out. That's right. It was a big stiff arm from Keith Morgan there at about the 15-yard line. And then he dove for the pylon. He lost the ball there. And, and you got to be careful because if he fumbles it through the end zone, it would be a touchback. The ball would go over to Tecumseh. But the referees ruled that he uh, stepped out of bounds before he lost the ball. And so the Chiefs will have it first and go with the one. Morgan under center. Three running backs behind him. Chiefs trying to go up by two scores. Morgan keeps it himself. Right over center behind Colin Rockle. Touchdown. Morgan with another rushing touchdown. His second one tonight. And that may be the backbreaker. Never counts the Cubs out. Chiefs lead it 34-20. 2.52 to go in the football game. I'll make it awful tough on the Cubs. They put up a great fight here tonight at Dodd Stadium. But too much firepower from the Chiefs tonight. Too much Keith Morgan. Too much Sean Egler. Too much Zach Moss Parker. And too much good blocking. And too much offensive line. I mean, they just collapsed the defense on that <laughs> touchdown run. Here comes Bolt for the conversion. It's good. We'll take a break. Good. 
Well, Fountain leads it now by 15 after they gave up the block punt for a score. The offense says up on for another ride. Long run by Morgan. Sets up a Morgan short touchdown run. 2.52 to go in the ball game. Your score on the McDonald's of Fountain High School football scoreboard. Bell Fountain 35, Tecumseh 20, Chiefs will kick it away after this on 13-9 the Bell. Kickoff brought to you by Vicarios and Dunn booms it. Taken by McKee. Right around the five. McKee looking for a lane. McKee still trying to run wide and he's brought down around the 24. Nice tackle that time by the Chiefs. Let me see who made the stop. Looks like it was Alex Geho. Geho makes the tackle and Tecumseh has got to start at their own 24 and a half. 243 to go in the football game. Chiefs lead the arrows 35-20. Indian Lake, fourth quarter leading Benjamin Logan, 26-0. The Lakers continue to stay in the playoff hunt. They'll go into week uh, 10 next week with a chance to make these reach 10 playoffs. Now Galt in shotgun. Got to think he'll be dialing Josh McKee's number. Galt rolls left, has pressure. Still trying to run it's wide. Brought down in the backfield. Skelly had pursuit. So did Mitch Wren. And this is where the defensive lineman, this is like, <laughs> like Christmas for a young guy. That's right. Mitch Wren actually had dropped off into the short zone there, playing pass coverage. And when uh, quarterback Galt there got uh, uh, to the corner and Skelly had him sized up, Wren came out of his coverage and really got just a free shot or a good run at the quarterback and delivered a big, big hit. Second and 18. Galt rolls right. Still looking. Throws. Towards McKee. But did he make the one-handed grab? No. Out of bounds on the far sideline. That would have been a heck of a catch. Hey, well, you can see, though, where he, he's, a, he's a college player somewhere as a wideout. I think so, yeah. At least a Division three, or maybe a smaller school, but uh, he's a real nice athlete, really a, a good competitor, so still, still out there with uh, Galt and, and Holmes and, and Smelko. They're no give up in them, even though it's a pretty desperate situation now for Tecumseh clock moved down to two minutes and one second to play in the game. 35-20, Chiefs lead it here on 13 at the Bell. Coming up, we'll have the Wendy's the Bell Found in Urbana post-game show where we'll have our player of the game. Galt now wants to run it. He's Galt got a lot of room. For a running lane, and he slips through a couple of tackles, and he's brought down around the 24-yard line. He is slippery, but that will bring up fourth at about nine, and jumps to brings out some more offensive players. They won't punt, and I think that's the right move. You If you punt, the game's over. Yeah, this is definitely... Uh, no chance if you give up the ball here, especially with the Bell Fountain offense as efficiently as it's played in the second half. So Tyler Galt will have a big fourth down, and he'll need to convert here. This game is going to be the eighth win of the season for the Chiefs. 125 to go. Galt wants to pass. That's pressure. Still looking to get away from Duffy. Galt still running, still running, trying to get to the marker. He will be brought down about five yards short of the marker at the 29 of Bell Fountain. Flag. A flag thrown late. It should be Bell Fountain football, but the flag will be a big indicator. And there's another flag it's thrown down over there by the uh, official. We'll just wait here to let the referee sort it out as to what was going on in that pileup over there. First to file in the Chiefs. That's one of the flags. Unfortunately, conduct against the Chiefs as well. First down. I would just love to know what, what happened. It just looked again like a, a normal tackle. Uh, sure did from here, but that sits well across the field right. from where we are, and uh, that's going to give new life to the arrows, if, if only maybe temporarily. But uh, it's going to be a personal foul, Bell Fountain. And it's going to be a unsportsmanlike conduct, Bell Fountain, and that's going to be a 30-yard penalty against the Chiefs. Wow. That's 
able to take up his biggest plays of the night in yardage I on a one I, play. You don't see a 30-yard penalty very much. It's going to take it all the way down from the uh, The personal foul maybe could be a yard, face, could maybe have been a face Could have been a face miss from the 30-yard line where the Chiefs would have had the ball of of the arrows all the way across midfield and down to the to the Bell Fountain 40-yard line where the arrows will take it still alive here at Dodd Stadium. Yeah, and it, it, the big thing was Bell Fountain was going to get possession and just kill the clock. You're right, Galt rolls rolls left, wants to throw over the middle of the field, and McKee tries to make the catch. He's knocked down by Egler. A little bit high, it falls incomplete, second and ten. Sean Boy, not Eggler easy tonight. Shadowing McKee all the way across on that deep crossing round two. Gave him a good shot there, sent him to the turf. Uh, that's tough to know with the penalties late in the game. Uh, as the head coach for Coach Brown, you, 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 can, you cannot like them at all. No, it's not good, especially as well as Bell Fountain has played since uh, the early going of this game. About the end of the first quarter on, Bell Fountain's really played a terrific game up until that, that stretch right there. Galt rolls left. Has pressure, throws back the other way. And the receiver makes the catch, but his knee was down. Loss of about four yards. Nice looking throwback screen if the receiver doesn't put it down to one knee. Who knows? 47 seconds to go in the game. Tecumseh says, if they give us the timeouts to use, we'll use them. We'll take a break. 47 seconds to go in the football game. Bell Fountain leading Tecumseh 35-20, but the Arrows just refuse to give in. Back with the final 47 ticks after this at 13.90 the bell. They had a block punt in this fourth quarter. Then they were helped by a couple of big Bell Fountain penalties. And the Euros still have it third and 14 at the Bell Fountain 44. Chiefs lead at 35-20 with 47 seconds to go. But thought the game was over, but the Euros still with possession. I want to throw deep down the sidelines into double coverage. And the ball broke it up into a double team. Egler and Morgan on McKee. And those are three good athletes going for the ball. But... When you have Egler and Morgan covering one guy, it's going to be tough to squeeze it in. Yeah, it's going to be tough for anyone, even an athlete as good as Josh McKee. And, you know, clearly, it's uh, pretty obvious that Tyler Galt's receiver is Josh McKee. I don't think that we've seen a pass of any kind of length uh, directed to anyone but him. He's the down-the-field threat for the Arrows, and Bell Fountain wisely has given him double-team coverage whenever he uh, tries to take it anywhere down the field. Fourth and 14, 39 seconds to go in the game. Throw down the sidelines again into a double team and the ball broke it up and that will be the football game. 32 seconds to go. Coming over from the safety spot that time was Morgan. He breaks it up and the Chiefs will take over on downs at their 44 yard line. Kempsa does have two timeouts to go but being down by 15 points I don't think they'll use them so I think this is just uh, Victory formation time. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll see Keith Morgan take a knee, and it'll be the eighth victory of the season for the Bell Fountain Chiefs. Should secure the playoff berth, certainly, I would think, for Bell Fountain, and really put them on track for uh, for a home home game here at Dodd Stadium in Week 11. Of course, closing out the season next week here at Dodd with with Seven, who is going into night and not won a football game. There's the knee. Morgan takes the knee. Clock down to 25 seconds. Referee will put it down with about 20 seconds to go, and the Chiefs will not have to run another play, and that will be the football game. To Cubs, a pesky bunch. I'll line them up and shake hands, and Belfound's going to win this one tonight at home. 35-20, the final. Pretty impressed with the arrows, though. They showed me a lot of good stuff tonight. Don't fall to 5-4, and, and the Chiefs go to 8-1. And, and with the win... Uh, you said right from the top of the broadcast, uh, Belfound now has really put themselves in a great position to make the playoffs. Yeah, I think the Chiefs are in. Um, realistically speaking, you know, Stavis is next week's opponent has really struggled this year, has not won a, a football game. We don't know what they did tonight, but 
really it's been a tough year for Stebbins as it has been for the past few years. And so you really, as you, as you stand here right now, have to assume that probably the Chiefs will come away with a victory. Of course, they got to play next.